Today we're going to talk about how to properly read wiring diagrams. A reading a wiring diagram is a very important part of most electrical troubleshooting procedures and it's something that you really need to know how to do. In this in dealership training program we'll look at the following things as they relate to reading wiring diagrams. We'll look at what is a current flow diagram and how they are arranged, fuse and relay panels, terminal designations, identifying connectors and other connections, current track numbers and switch positions, and electrical symbols. Now wiring diagrams are also known as current flow diagrams. This is because the components are arranged on the pages of the diagram based on their electrical function and how the current flows instead of where they are located on the vehicle. In general, the current flow in our wiring diagrams is arranged to flow from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. The source of the power, such as the fuse relay panel or a relay, is usually located at the top area of the diagram. The current consumer, or component being operated or controlled, is usually located here in the center area of the diagram. The circuit ground connections are then located at the bottom of the diagram, with this line here at the bottom of the diagram representing the vehicle body, which is where the ground connections are attached. The electrical components are arranged within the diagram based on their electrical operation and the circuit that they belong to, instead of, as I said, being shown where they're located on the vehicle. For example, the rear window heating element is located here in the back of the vehicle at the rear window. And the switch that controls it is located here towards the front of the vehicle in the dashboard. In the wiring diagram, they're located right next to each other because they belong in the same circuit. You'll also notice the name of the electrical circuits on the bottom of each page. The wiring diagrams are arranged so that the electrical circuits and systems are placed individually within the diagram. Now this is done to make things less confusing because you normally work on one circuit or system on the vehicle at a time. Now let's briefly review what we've covered so far. Components are located according to their electrical function, not how they are located on the vehicle. The flow of electrical current is normally from top to bottom. The source of electrical power is usually towards the top of the diagram with the ground connections being at the bottom of the page. The gray shaded area at the top of the diagram is the fuse and relay panel. Now this is the central part of the vehicle's electrical system. Relays that are located on the panel are located within this gray shaded area. The dark numbered boxes give the location or position of the relay. As an example, the load reduction relay is located here on the wiring diagram. The box with the number four identifies its position as relay socket number four. Now don't confuse these numbers with the large numbers that are on the top of the relays. These are production numbers for the relays that are used when the car is built and have no use when reading a wiring diagram. Relays that are shown below the gray shaded area are not plugged into the relay panel. Sometimes a dark numbered box next to the relay is used to identify its location here in the rows of sockets in the auxiliary relay panel that is used to hold these additional relays and fuses. A picture identifying these locations can usually be found on the front page of each wiring diagram. The thin lines inside the gray shaded area of the fuse relay panel are electrical circuits inside the panel. Now these are circuits that are used as connections to components such as relays or other circuits 
within the vehicle's electrical system. The top line in this fuse relay panel is usually terminal 30, which means it receives power direct from the battery positive terminal. Now this circuit is used to supply other circuits within the vehicle, such as the ignition switch. From there, the ignition switch will supply the terminal number 15 circuit inside the relay panel. This circuit is powered whenever the ignition switch is in the on or start position. The terminal number 31 is a ground circuit and is connected directly to the vehicle body. This circuit supplies a ground connection for the relays in the fuse relay panel and other circuits in the vehicle. The terminals that are used for the connections going into and out of the fuse relay panel are also identified by letters and numbers next to these connections. The terminal number 30 connection to the ignition switch from the battery is identified here as terminal H1 slash 1. These mean that this terminal on the panel is located here in terminal block H1. The number after the slash identifies the terminal number or cavity in this block, which in this example is terminal number 1. The terminals on most of the other electrical components are also identified like this. These terminal numbers here, number 30, 50, X, SU, and 15, identify these terminals here on the back of the ignition switch. Now let's review some of the things we have just covered. The fuse relay panel is the gray shaded area on the top of the diagram. The circuits and relays that are illustrated inside this shaded area are located inside or on the fuse relay panel. The terminal connections on the fuse relay panel and other electrical components are identified with letters and numbers. A very important part of reading a wiring diagram is being able to identify and locate the wiring harness connectors because many times electrical problems can be the result of a loose or open connection. Now, most wire connectors are identified by the capital letter T. The number after identifies the number of cavities or terminal in this connector. If a letter is after the connector, this is used to distinguish the connector from other connectors in the vehicle that also have the same amount of cavities or terminals. A list of all the connectors shown in the diagram along with a description of their location is given here in the index. As an example, say you were looking for this connector going to the tail lights, T6B. You could find the description of the connector location here in the index, which would tell you that the connector is located here in the trunk. Connectors with multiple terminals or cavities will have a number after the slash, such as this connector here from the multifunction switch for the automatic transmission. The index tells us that the connector is located here in the left side of the engine compartment. The number after the slash tells us that this terminal is in the cavity number three of the connector housing. Another very important part of reading a wiring diagram is locating the ground connections for the circuits and components which you are tracing. Remember, the bottom line in the wiring diagram represents the vehicle body, which is where all ground circuits ultimately have to connect. The circles with the numbers inside identifies where these ground connections are located. A list of these connections can also be found in the index of the wiring diagram. This index lists the ground connections and describes their location. Some ground connections are also shown with a fine line, like this thermal switch. This means that the ground connection 
is made through the switch housing directly to the engine. Whenever you see these fine lines in a wiring diagram, these show the internal wiring connections or connections inside a relay, switch, or some other electrical component. Some connections are also welded inside the wiring harness. Now, this is done to reduce the amount of external connections. These connections will look like this in the wiring diagram and can be identified by using the index which describes their location. These welded connections are used for both plus and ground connections inside the wiring harness. Now let's briefly review what we have covered. Inline wire connectors are identified by the letter T. The number after the letter T identifies how many terminals the connector has. The general location of each connector is given in the index at the front of the wiring diagram. Internal circuits in the fuse relay panel and other components are shown as fine lines. Some power and ground connections are welded internally in the wire harness. Other things we should look at before you practice what we have covered so far is current track numbers and how these numbers are used to show the continuation of various wires and circuits. The current flow wiring diagrams are drawn in such a way so that the majority of circuits are shown with the wires going from top to bottom. This makes the wiring diagrams easier to read by reducing the amount of wires that are drawn crossing over each other. Each one of these wire paths are identified by a current track number. These numbers are in the index and can also be used to help locate specific points within the wiring diagram. These numbers are also used to show the continuation of wires instead of drawing the wires to cross over one another. To see the continuation of this wire from the automatic transmission control unit, this number tells me to go to current track 67. Because the wire is shown on this page in current track 48, I can go to current track 67 and look for the numbered box 48. And by using the current track number, trace the wire in either direction. It is also important to realize that all switches and relays are shown in the off or deactivated position. As an example, the multifunction switch on the four-speed automatic transmission is shown in the park position. The light switch turned off and the wipers turned off. All thermal switches and temperature dependent switches are shown at room temperature. Now let's review the things we have just covered. Current track numbers are used at the bottom of the page for each vertical wire path. These are used to locate components within the diagram. A number with a box at the end of a wire shows which current track that wire continues in. All switches and relays are shown in their off or deactivated position. The last thing we'll look at in this program is the use of symbols in the wiring diagrams. Every part or component shown in a wiring diagram is illustrated using an electrical symbol which identifies it as a switch, a solenoid, a temperature sensor, or whatever the part is. The name of each part is printed next to it. This is preceded by a letter and number combination which is also used to identify each part. These numbers are used by the 1551 diagnostic tester to identify electrical components. 
Well, that covers all the important points that you'll need to know to read a current flow diagram. The things that we've covered here today are what is a current flow diagram, fuse and relay panels, terminal designations, identifying wire connections, current tracks and switch positions, and electrical symbols. Now is a good time to review the list of symbols that is included in the workbook that comes with this in dealership training program. And then take a few moments to answer the questions and complete the exercises that are also in this workbook. This will only take a few minutes, but it will be helpful in ensuring that the next time you have an electrical wiring problem to repair, you'll be able to use the wiring diagram to help you fix the car right the first time. Thank you.